Here's a little study I did based on an image that I took when I was walking along the river by our home. I love the glow of light coming from behind the mountain in this photo. I didn't like the dam showing though, so I took that out in Photoshop and did a little scribble with the pencil tool. I also added these crosshair, um, these cross lines and the third lines to help me do my drawing later on. I want to really simplify this painting, so I took ultramarine blue and created three shades, that's adding white into the paint, and then three shades of quinacridone red. I also will be using nickel azo yellow later on, and the white that I used was titanium white. In my sketchbook, I gessoed the paper and uh, put some masking tape on, just so I'll have nice clean edges on my little painting later. I always make sure that my format will be correct to the future painting. This might be a, a larger painting later on, and the way to find out is to do a little study first and see how it turns out. This sketch is a 3 to 4 ratio, so it could end up being a 9 by 12 or an 18 by 24 painting. Uh, what I've done here is I put on the uh, cross lines and the third lines, just like in the photo on my iPad. I also put an extra coating of acrylic medium on top of that gesso so the pencil wasn't sticking very well so I took a pastel pencil and started doing the drawing with that instead. When you're doing the drawing for this look for those great big shapes. The mountain on the right is a nice big triangle and the other mountains are a little bit more rectangular in shape. And then you can invent your own shape of tree. It could be a person standing there, or maybe there's a deer or something. It doesn't have to be a tree. But the reason I put the tree there is it makes it more interesting to look at something that has overlapping shapes. So we look at the tree, we look past that tree to that first mountain, and to the past mount, uh, mountains further in the background, and then further to the sky where we'll have that sunset. Here I've taken the, the darker tint of the quinacridone red and placed that on the bottom of the mountain and the tree. Then I took this second shade of the uh, quinacridone red and blended it in towards the, where the sunset will be. And then the lightest tint of the uh, quinacridone red right against the sky. And then secondly I went to the background mountain and did the same thing with the blue paint, taking the darker shade, blending it into that middle shade, into that lighter shade. So if you do this quickly while the paint is wet, you can use uh, a brush or your finger to do nice little blends between um, the different gradations. With this painting, you could leave the tree out until later and, and paint it right on top. It's just a habit of mine to do negative space painting. To make this painting easier, make sure you mix enough of the three shades to finish the painting. If you do run out of one of the shades, just remember that these paints will dry darker if you're using acrylics. Here I'm adding little bits of uh, those pink colors and blue colors in different shades into the water. The pink tree and the pink mountain will end up being nice dark colors later once we place some glazes. At this stage I've taken the nickel azo yellow and added a tiny bit of the red and some of the white and that creates a little bit of a duller um, orangey color to place in the sky. By adding a little bit more red I can change that color up a bit and uh, make some change of colors every inch. Notice how this slightly duller yellowy orange color makes the other yellow look much brighter. It's a good practice to place color swatches in your sketchbook and to write down the colors that you used. Here I'm adding a tint of the quinacridone red. There's more white than the color and just blending it out with my fingers and uh, dragging it out to the sky. My goal is to do a nice soft transition from the mountain glow to the sky. Just playing around in the water a little bit. I took the ultramarine blue and white and added some more darker shades into the water and some more of the pink color or the quinacridone red and then put in some lighter quin reds as well. This is the fun part, adding some of that nickel azo yellow over top of the dry paint and starting to get some of the warm colors happening. I have to be careful when adding the yellow not to make the mountain go too greeny colored. Adding a little bit of the quin red, doing a little bit more blending, push pull, push pull. This is a glaze of ultramarine blue. I've added GAC 500 to the paint to thin it down and now the mountains are getting a little bit darker. 
I wanted to bring more of that quinacridone red over into that background mountain. And once I did that and the paint was dry, I added some more of the Nicolazo yellow, building up that warm glow. I added some more titanium white to the blue, ultramarine blue, and I also added some medium to it and put a, a glaze of that blue-gray over top of the mountain just to make it sit back a little further. Here's another layer of ultramarine blue, further darkening the silhouette of the tree and the mountain. Here I'm adding a transparent glaze of uh, nickel azel yellow that has been mixed with GAC 500 and here is some of that transparent quinacridone red placed as well. I'm taking some of the ultramarine blue and readjusting the shape of the side of the mountain as well. The little study on the right side of my sketchbook was my first try at this little painting using anthroquinoin blue and Hansa yellow. Um, the colors look quite different than the one on the left, so something to learn there. I'm always fascinated how differently a painting can look when you just change one of the colors, the yellow, the red, or the blue. Here I'm adding a more gray-blue and a little bit darker blue to the water to create a contrast to the light that's hitting from the sun. To create a gray, all you need to do is to mix all three of your primary colors together, leaning towards one side or the other, whether it's blue or red or yellow. It's a great practice to take photos of your work as you're going along and then take those photos and change them into black and white. This is a way of checking to make sure that you have enough tonal values in your work. A common problem with beginner painting is often not the colors that are used but the tonal values. You think there's something wrong with my painting, I don't know what, and more often than not it's not having enough shades. Well I think that's it for this little study and on we go. Thank you so much for watching and subscribe for notice of future videos. Take care. Bye.